This is a bittersweet moment for all of us here at CBS News. On Sunday, Chief Washington Correspondent Bob Schieffer signs off as host of Face the Nation after 24 years. He is also retiring from a journalism career of more than half a century. As a young newspaper reporter, Bob went to Vietnam to cover the war. He worked at the Fort Worth Star-Telegram on the day President Kennedy was gunned down in Dallas. He brought Lee Harvey Oswald's mother to the police station. Bob started his legendary career at CBS News in 1969. He covered the Pentagon, State Department, Capitol Hill, and the White House. He also anchored the CBS Evening News. We will visit with Bob in a moment, but first, a few moments from a remarkable reporter's life. Here we go. This is the last take. I'm Bob Schieffer of CBS News. The questions are mine. And I'm going to sing you the story of my life. Bob Schieffer, CBS News, New Delhi. I'll, I'll let you start, Bob, since okay. it's your show, you know. This is the CBS Evening News, and this is Bob Schieffer reporting Good Evening. Today on Face the Nation, we knew you real political junkies would be up to join us this morning. I can't tell you whether Bob Schieffer is a Republican or a Democrat or a Libertarian or a Vegetarian. Let's try to tell the people tonight some things that they haven't heard. He asked straight questions and he asked tough questions. If yeah. you didn't threaten to shut down the government, who was it that did? How can so many reputable, respected professionals keep pressing on with this? Well, that's your characterization, not mine. Do you like politics? You know, Do you like this job? His essential question is always, what the heck is going on? What in the world were you talking about, sir? TV anchorman. I think I finally found honest work. I always wanted to be a journalist, and I got to do that. Bob Schieffer joins us now from Washington. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Charlie. And you did catch the highlight of my life that day that our little band was invited to be at the Grand Ole Opry. That, that's still a high point, i got to say. <laughs> so what are you going to do now? Go on to a career as a country and western singer? <laughs> well, uh, they haven't been exactly lining up at the door <laughs> to offering me recording contracts, but I'll tell you, if one came along, I might give a lot of thought to that. Uh, that's uh, my buddy Brad Fa Paisley that night, and uh, Brad has become a very good friend over what the What will you miss so, the most, Bob? You know, I'm just going to miss, Charlie, exactly what you would miss, and that is being in the middle of things. I've kind of been in the middle of things for a long time now. I've uh, had access to the people who make the news, who, who have an impact with their actions uh, on the rest of us in this country, and I just never got over that. I mean, that's the reason I wanted to be a reporter. Uh, you know, I just... I always got a big kick out of being able to go behind police lines where other people couldn't go, talking to this people, these exactly. people who, who made the news. And I guess I have to say that's the part that I'm going to miss the most. But I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. But why did you decide, Bob, that now was the time, just as the presidential campaign is ramping up, which in, in your line of work, this is a reporter's dream, why did you decide now is the time to say sayonara? You know, I'll tell you, Gail, and I thought a lot about this, and, I, and uh, uh, this was a, a calculated decision. Uh, I wanted, number one, to be able to walk away from this job when people still thought I could do it. I mean, I've just seen too many people here in Washington that they hang around and hang around, and then somebody has to come get them by the hand and say, come on, old fella, it's time to, you know, get back, uh, get in your car and <laughs> go back home. I just didn't want to do that. And I, I felt like CBS is doing great these days. CBS News is doing great. I think uh, uh, we're doing a great job. And CBS's face the nation is in very good shape. So uh, those were the reasons that I decided to want to, I wanted to do it. John Dickerson, who's a great friend of mine, uh, who's going to take my place, I also wanted to give him time to kind of settle into this job over the next three months before the campaign year began. So those were the reasons that uh, uh, went into the timing. Here. There have been so many wonderful things being written and said about you at this point. One of my favorites was simply, he's someone that never became Washington. But I'm curious, in that chair, how do you feel like Washington has changed from when you started to now? Well, it's been turned upside down. I mean, as has everything because of this uh, revolution in communications. Uh, you know, we now don't know 
where people get their news. Uh, but what we do know is they're bombarded with information uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Most of the information is wrong, uh, and, and some of it uh, wrong on purpose. It is our job, I think, in mainstream journalism to try to cut through this mall of information and tell people what we think is relevant and, and what they need to know about. That, that is the job of the journalist, and I have to say it's harder and harder. The other thing that has changed, of course, is this influx of money. I mean, our campaigns have become, I have more billionaires than you do, so I'm, I'm a viable candidate. I, I don't think that's what the founders had in mind when they started this country. And I don't know where this goes, but I think something is going to have to change on that front. Because what we have now, uh, people have to sign off with so many special interests before they get to Washington that once they're here, they can't compromise. And when you have a, a government and a legislative body that can't compromise, you have what we have a uh, legislative body that's in constant and total gridlock. Uh, Bob, I speak for everybody at this table, everybody at CBS News. Uh, we are so proud to have called you a colleague, yes. and everybody that's in this business would like to have the life uh, and the impact that you have had and bring the values that you have brought uh, to broadcasting. So we thank you for this, and we hope to continue to have your friendship uh, and see you occasionally. Uh, as you leave face the nation, Charlie, but not Charlie, I lives. thank you. I thank you, and I want everyone to know nobody enjoyed this more than I did. I loved every <laughs> minute of it, mm -hmm. and I appreciate all the nice things that people have said here at the last. I don't know if they're deserved or not, but uh, it's been a wonderful life for they me. They are well-deserved, Bob. Bob. Bob told me recently the only thing he knows he won't be doing is dancing with the stars. So, <laughs> so whatever you My decide, Bob, says no way. we're cheering you on. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you, Kay. Thanks, friend. We invite you to join Bob on Sunday for his final edition of Face the Nation. His guest, former Florida Governor Jeb Bush and CIA Director John Brennan. That's Sunday, only on CBS.